Hello Apex Sellers viewers, welcome back to our sessions, Mules out for Salesforce Developers. This is part 4 of developing APIs and uh, let's get started. Uh, the agenda for today is as usual, we will be discussing about the recap of our previous session. Then we will be discussing about the validation module and database connection. So we started using external systems, isn't it? In last, uh, in last session we have discussed about HTTP requester. So here in this session we will be connecting to another external system database. Validation is a small component that I wanted to discuss. Okay, uh, let's go with the recap of previous session. So we have discussed about things to remember when connecting to external systems. I will keep on adding this slide in every session of development of APIs whenever we are connecting to external systems because those are the things that are really important to remember. Next, we have seen HTTP requester, how we can use. We have taken the example of weather API and we have seen choice connector, scatter gather connector, right? So guys, as I always insist, please do hands on if you want to learn. Uh, practice, practice, practice is the only mantra that you can uh, use. All right. So let's get started with the validation component. Um, actually, I don't use validation component a lot because I will, I would like to do that process using data view but still examination point of view or certification point of view or interview point of view or maybe in real-time projects of course people will use validation components but i don't usually recommend just for your understanding i wanted to explain this validation component it's very simple it's all english there so validation component will verify the content of the message whether it matches the specified criteria or not that is very simple and it will proceed to further connector like next connector if the conditions are matched else it will raise an error okay and this is how the validation connectors looks like so this is the component and you can see multiple operations like for example if you want to check like is if it is a number or not if it is a string or not those kind of things you can use pretty simple things okay let's do hands-on because i don't want to waste more time on the validation component but when it comes to certification exam this is really important so coming back to our previous rows i will keep all these flows as is okay and you can see i have added multiple listeners and i will add one more listeners for our use case here so we are using validation component. So let me give some meaningful name. I can use any any name. It's not mandatory to use, but always best practice to use a valid name. So yes, validation component. And um, if you see validation here, uh, if you go to core and see if we have validation component here now. So validation, you can see validation here, okay. So if you drag first drag and drop some connector, okay, when you drag and drop some connector, you can see now validation component will be appearing over here. Okay, I will see it, save it. And now what I wanted to do is first I will I wanted to check uh, if that if you, the person, you know, the request that you are sending is a number or not any field if you are trying to send, we have to check whether it is a number or not. All that you need to do is drag and drop the connector add the module configuration because it doesn't exist just click on plus and click on ok that's it now you can keep any value here so for now what i wanted to do is i want to pass uh, mm -mm -mm. yeah let me put a transfer message here okay let me put a transfer message here and uh, json and then payload dot id that means in input i have to pass this payload dot id okay then uh, transfer message i will keep another transfer message i will say like if if this is a number whatever payload dot id is a number then if it is a number is number if it is a number yes then it will go to the next component and then it will continue the process if not it will raise an error so i will just say like success okay and in this is number it is still showing error because here we have to keep so mandatory configuration details are values what value you want to keep here i gave payload dot id but here the transfer message itself is a payload so here i will try to put payload click on fx put on payload okay and whenever you are selecting is number there is an option also like whether it is an integer or blah 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 i'll go with the integer for now and uh, you can also keep some patterns or minimum or maximum values and all 
and message if you are getting message you can customize your message i will say like for now i am not sometimes i will use fx sometimes i don't but if you are using fx i told you right you have to say like you have to put it in double quotes this is not a number please check so customized message we can send okay if you are not putting if you are not clicking fx as this is a string you don't need double quotes that is the difference so i'll sh most of the times i keep fx but this time i wanted to show you like you know you can do by this way as well okay now everything looks good for me let's try to run it or debug probably yeah whenever you are using any connector for the first time please try to use your debugger okay let me put debugger point here because i wanted to show that payload.id how so if i'm passing payload.id here here right then i have to pass it in the same way so this is validation and as i am pa passing payload then that means i have to choose body select raw you can pass it like anything like payload.id that means a json so i'll just keep like this okay id colon one two three i am for now i am passing a number an integer value let's see what happens so let me put over here all right let's see if the application is deployed yes the application is deployed and uh, let me send the request you can see the current payload value because that is that is in blue dotted line my current payload value is the whole id like you know whole json object but once i get out of this transfer message now my payload value is only one two three because i am transforming my payload into payload.id now this particular validation component will check now the number of the name of the connector itself will tell you whether it is a number or not okay even before doing this i can use x plus y to check type of payload okay if i evaluate it is a number so it should work actually so you can you ask your question like this is number is it a number one two three yes it is a number when you get an answer yes it will go to the next connector you can see here yep it is success because it is a number now what i will do is i will pass a b c here okay send it again id a b c next you can go a b c here now you can ask you a question like is a b c because it is having double quotes is a b c a number no when it is no it should raise an error so before doing that let me also cross check what the debugger is doing here payload type of payload it is a string so ideally it should fail here okay you can say this is failing and you can see the customized message the detailed description is this is not a number please check okay this is not a number please check right this is the advantage of using validation component another interesting thing that i wanted to show you is one two three four i will send one two three four send it here put x plus y type of payload okay evaluate this is showing a string why because i am passing this one two three four within double quotes which will consider as string so still it is taking as a success response because sometimes like is number mulesoft is very smart enough to you know try to convert internally if there are only digits here okay so guys this is really important when you are doing a real time you know this thing like you have to make sure that your logic is proper okay it's it is still though it is saying string there it is still showing success but if i keep one two three four a this will fail now because it will not convert internally this will give an error and it will say like this is not a number but if you are passing all numeric values within string still it will internally convert to a number okay that's why it is passing okay this is success okay likewise you can what you can do is you can use like multiple validation component connectors like whether it is null for example let me put this here okay let me delete it is null again you have to configure this value yes uh, you can use the existing module configuration and you can say payload you can say like is null is it null if it is null so you should not get confused okay you are checking for is null means the value should be null then it will go 
no it is not a null value that means if you are passing any value this will fail because you are checking like is null so you have to question yourself is it null yes yes means it will go next is it not null no like so you have both connectors is not null is null okay don't get confused with the namings all right so let's wait for it to be deployed and we can close this validation component connector nothing much to discuss about it probably we'll be discussing in the error handling session so for now what i will do is id okay i will send the same id here it is not judging oops it is not judging whether it is number or something like that so here you can see id yes now payload value is one two three four now question is is it null no it is not null so when you get answer no it will fail because no it is not a null value that's true now what if i'm giving like some wrong like name instead of this name okay i will send this i'm still getting name but when i pass through this transfer message it will be null because here i'm trying to put payload dot payload dot id but payload dot id is not present so it is giving us null it, now question arises is null yes it is null so it will go to next value and say like success okay this is the this is all about validation connector all right so that is that is all with the validation component here now coming back to our slides what we want to discuss is very important i will repeat the size things to do before doing um, before connecting to database people who don't know about database please go through some videos what database means it is a place where to store all the information so before going to do this hands-on you might need to do some kind of stuff like currently i am using mysql for my demo purpose so that is because that i feel like out of all databases like when compared to oracle or any other databases i feel like installing mysql is very easy on your local this is on local okay so install database mysql is easy to install on local you can watch this video i know that it is like a lengthy url but you can type it by looking at my screenshot take a pause or you can i have given a shortened uh, url if this shortened url is not working there is only way that you can go and just type like in you on youtube like how to install mysql uh, and go on the edureka channel that will give you a step series of steps how to install that okay and uh, okay uh, create a salesforce developer account i will show you after this and do see I always say like do something beyond what we learned in this session so whatever i'm teaching is the basics but you should always go beyond that and try to explore it all right practice 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 is only the success mantra so things to remember when you want to connect to external systems the same slide that i have shown you in our previous session i will reiterate everything Again, I told like external systems are like database, Salesforce, SFTP or any external web services. We have seen how to connect to external web services using HTTP requester in our previous session. Today we are going to discuss about database. So again, whenever you are connecting to external systems, you have to gather all the configuration details required to connect to that particular system. See the request, what that particular system is accepting, the type of request it is accepting the security that is required and the type of response that it returns you have to always observe these few things okay and good to know as usual how much time it takes to respond us okay now coming back to our database connector i told you like i have my uh, database installed on my system but please try to install on your system to do some hands-on so mandatory configuration details again in mulesoft all everything is like connector and configuration so you have to know what are the mandatory details required so driver is very important host is important port user password database service name whatever it is sql query text and uh, default values empty but you cannot keep empty expression it will not deploy your application okay this is how database connector looks like you have multiple operations you can do select operation you can do sell insert operations bulk insert bulk delete everything based upon your use case remember again this is irrelevant for you if you want to know bit beyond you can just 
no for your information this is just for your information but don't need don't need to remember these things okay in mule 3 in mule 3 long back we used to have a one database connector and when we drag and drop that connector there used to be a drop down list for us to select the operation like select update delete and insert but in mule 4 we have separate connectors for each operation that is the advantage in mule 4 okay not only database in salesforce and all also like each operation is a connector here in mule 4 all right as usual you can test connectivity connection if you want to check if the connection is successful okay the output type of select statement results in an array i will show you in our debugging session but keep this in mind they might ask you in our certification point of view if database select does not return any rows we will receive an empty array instead of null payload okay if you are doing select star from the sum table where id equal to 2 and if there is no rows returned it is always an empty array it is never called as null payload so whenever you are doing validation checks and all you should not go with like is not null you should go with like is empty or something like that okay so let's go with the hands-on session you will it you will feel like quite interesting here all that i want you to do first before doing that what i wanted to show is Mm, select statement java jdbc code spring mvc or whatever it is spring boot okay so to get a data or do a simple select statement in java we need to write like these many lines of codes you can do you have to do you have to code all this stuff okay i'm just comparing like why MuleSoft is more powerful, why it is called as no code, low code, right? So all these lines of codes will be done at the back end itself, okay? All that you need to do is go to AnyPoint Studio. Before that, I told you, like, I have installed my um, MySQL Workbench, okay? So MySQL Workbench is a tool to view the tables, rows, etc. Okay, I have installed my MySQL and this is my instance, local instance. If I double click on this, and I have already created a table. I can give you the, you know, uh, what do you say, the create statement, but you can also create your own table. It is not very hard, okay? You can see I have some set of rows already present in my database. Now what I will do is all these tables, uh, all this, you know, data. Let me put do one thing. Uh, I'm not sure if I can delete them. So delete rows, apply. Let's see if I can delete it. Okay, perfect. So let me delete this data also. Delete rows, apply, go back. I think this is not required, but this one, right click, delete rows, apply, and yes. Right now I don't have any details here. So send it, yes, it is null, okay? So this you have to install and you have to play around this, okay? Tables you can create, I have cre created an instance called mule and tables you can create multiple tables. All that I can do is like probably like create statement, okay? This is my create table statement. What I can do is I can put it somewhere, probably I can give you somewhere but maybe in the comment section or something. You can copy paste and create the table but I always suggest like you go ahead like right click on the table create table give your own table name and try to add this column names and all okay fine so I have my table already so bank details select rows I don't have any details right now I have deleted everything very simple very very simple instead of writing these many lines of code I told you it's about drag and drop and configuring MuleSoft is all about drag and drop first things first you need to add the database module there are two ways click on add module and you can see database take it to the left side and drop it it will automatically add here okay and then you can find multiple operations over here or re remove this module if you don't know where you have to click just search for select okay there is select statement here directly drag and drop onto the flow somewhere here okay automatically it will add on the left side and you can see it okay now that we are first initial step is I want to select some data, whatever is there. Right now I don't have any data, but I wanted to show from scratch. Okay. As usual, let me add one more HTTP listener 
here and let me put like database as giving a meaningful name again i am not giving any display name you can see all our listeners so again how can i know that what it is right you should always use proper naming conventions okay now select statement right now again we have to configure that is the first thing click on plus i told you right here uh, mandatory configuration details are driver host port blah 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 don't worry here first you need to choose which database you wanted to connect by default there are few options to connect to oracle mysql ms sql three different of database but if your company or if your organization is using any other database what you can do is you can use generic connection okay and you can ask your team to provide the thin url for that okay for now i am going to use mysql connection which is like very simple like how you log in into facebook or instagram you just enter your login username password etc it is something like that now coming back to our slides driver so first thing driver another beautiful thing with mulesoft is even if you don't know the driver just click on configure and click on add recommended libraries then it will say like you know this is the connector you wanted to add click on okay automatically that particular connector is added and your driver is added you don't have to do any extra work like you know here okay clear ms sql spring bo spring mvc crude example if you go okay and if you go with any other website so it will ask you to do that like you know uh give me one second so it will like show ask you to add these dependencies and all like mysql here the connector uh, java right this one is automatically added here for us by mules out by clicking on this add recommended library so you don't have to do much work on that host i am using my local database so i am using lo local port for uh, by default for mysql you can see in your workbench here the port is like 3306 by default and it is different for so i told you right any application any software will run on some port okay that port value should be unique means on 3306 only database should run not any other port and if you are giving http listener with 3306 it will say address already in bind okay user my username is root so i'll keep root password i know my password i can also show you pass password because you cannot connect to my local because it is locally deployed 1234567 okay you can either give database name here it is nothing but the instance name if you go here this is the database name or the service or instance that's what i have mentioned here like database service or instance one and the same so i can give mul all that you need to do is test the connection even before deploying the application if your test connection is successful then you can go ahead and do the math okay it is taking some time okay it connection is failing we'll see what it is okay let me figure it out what went wrong what is the device let me remove this 3306 could not add any connection from this okay new this is my sql close all the tabs let's see the properties right click if i have edit connection local host 3306 is that what i give yes password let me clear 12345678 okay test the connection it says like successfully made xpl connection ssl not enabled so ssl is also not enabled so it should be good okay 3306 root 
it should work let's see why it is not working oh this is not local it's local host that is the mistake see small times dumb mistakes can happen i think this time it should work you can see test connection is successful okay so local host 3306 this is my username and password everything now very simple i don't have to write the lines of codes like all this stuff not required all these lines of code is you can you can see here right what you're doing username password the url all this stuff is eradicated now only thing that we have to do is write the sql query that sql query also most of the time if you are a developer you are architect or you know people from database team will do this uh, uh, stuff but for now what you can do is select star from this one that will give the result right so i will copy this and always it is best method i will copy and paste it here okay and when you're copy pasting please try to check the double quotes or single quotes everything okay select star from i don't think you need a comma here select star from mule dot bank details for best practice i am always using like i wanted to display it in a json format so i will click like json but however i will show you the debug mode how this particular connector you know how this particular uh, output is being displayed when it is having no data okay right now we don't have any data isn't it so still let's debug and then we can try to add one row into the database directly manually and see the select statement output also the next step is like how to insert rows from mulesoft application that part okay it's very simple guys mulesoft is very simple to learn all that you need is when i say simple don't neglect it try to do hands-on hands-on is really important not only for mulesoft if that matters to any technology that you learn all right let's see if our application is deployed or not you should always go to this console and check it will take some time to deploy your application but don't worry have some patience now my application is deployed now let me go ahead and run my postman this time this is a different one so database i guess if i have if i am not wrong oops database i don't need to pass anything for now so i'll give as like body as none because i don't it's a select statement okay where is our database here now you are on database okay let's see currently the payload is nothing okay attributes you find all nothing is there now you are connecting to the database and see the output of database okay it is saying payload size equal to zero okay now if you go to expressify and see type of payload it still says array okay it stays says array if you expand this one right if you expand this time it shows output application java so type is array java again it can have an object and an array but it is basically a java object then i will convert that into json and you can see you are getting an empty array it is not null okay that is what you need to know now that i don't have any details here it is giving empty values let me try to put some values okay like sravan okay account number one two three four password uh, three four five six balance 120 okay that's it click on apply this is again i will try to copy this insert statement because that will be useful for our next uh, connector okay for now that is why we use mysql workbench it will show you everything here click on apply I didn't add any customer ID because I used customer ID as auto generated, but you can add your own customer ID. So now you can see I have these details. So if I run this query again on my dashboard, I can see one row is reflected. Now, now we are connecting to database. So it should give that row here. Okay. 
go to next can you see here it says insensitive hash map expand it you can see there is one row password balance again guys it's not always true that you will get the row column names in order cust id cust name it is hash it is case in case insensitive hash map hash map is like it can be random so you're getting these fields right password balance account blah 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 again go to x plus y check the type of payload okay it's an array and if you convert this particular hash map the type is here application java but i'm converting it into json and you can see my details are present over here right clear if at all if at all you want the details in sequence like what is there here okay what you can do i will just copy this in your transfer message again you have to use your mapping skills you know arrays we can apply map operator so it's something like payload map and you have all this instead of this one like dollar dot password okay again dollar dot balance okay let me do that so that dollar dot account number then dollar dot uh, custody and dollar dot cust name so if you want your cust name to be there and the top so this is how you can make use of data view to have it with a proper so i will just use this cust name cust this maybe first i will give cust id okay so now all good so i will read i'll just save it so that you will get this time every time when you run it you will get that order okay earlier it was like random order that is coming from the database but now i modified this output that's what mulesoft is all about right exchanging the information and uh, transforming it whatever customer wants like now customer says look hey i don't want the password or he don't want the password to be displayed you can remove this password field right how by using this transformation okay data view okay let's see whether the application is deployed or not yes it is successfully de deployed and you send the request i'll just resume this now it is coming according to your requirement now let me go ahead and add one more playing um, 4567 account number okay let me apply close it run it you can see two rows now you should be seeing two you should be seeing two rows now when you run this application if you send you can see size is two because i have two payloads now this one and this one sravan and lingam resume it very simple you are getting two records so this is in this is how you will connect to a database and retrieve the data from database see the difference between writing the lines of code and how mulesoft helps you to eradicate that work that's why it is the name came mule mule is like a donkey and it's a crossbreed of a donkey and a horse right and uh, the load the donkey work will be done by mulesoft itself and your applications run like a horse right so that's why the name mulesoft came up so yep there is this is select statement so another important thing is always i'm trying to add manually through this particular you know dashboard and all but can we start inserting data from mulesoft application yes you can do that so for that what i will do is i will go here i will stop the application okay <clears throat> let me keep the database select as it is let me change data the name as database from database to database select so that every time we add it should show database select okay now let me add another http listener drag and drop put database insert 
okay now i want to use insert query so i will search in insert there is there are two components bulk insert and insert i will go with only one insert i want to insert one by one okay and uh, choose the connection you can you don't need to create every time you, there is already a connection created click on drop down select that one and you don't know the sql statement that is very important thing right you need an sql statement for that what i am doing just imagine so i will type something blah 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 click on apply i am not going to apply but i just wanted this query in real time in real time uh, the database team can provide you or your architect will provide you the insert query but so what i'll do is i'll just copy paste and what i need to do is when i'm doing some copy paste sometimes this double quotes or single quotes will give an issue so for that what you can do is you can replace with whatever I, this is there okay okay so when it come to values this is very important here if you are placing these values by default right default every time this one it will always pass these values but we need to make this as dynamic how to make this as dynamic you have to make use of this input parameters this is another not another this is the important information because you never you will never pass the values directly here you will pass these parameters through here click on fx okay so here you need to pass all the values like here okay either if you are not clicking fx just put this one and pass the values but if you are clicking fx right you can pass the values something like this now the order of the column the value should be same like whatever value first you are passing here like first for example apex account number one two three four five and amount one two three four okay first let me check the data type that is also very important so to know the data type you have to go description or i can just go to create statement here balance is a decimal value so i should not pass string okay okay so what i will do is here yeah anyways i will pass these values so you have to here customer name the first value should be here okay now if you don't want to pass these values directly here and you want to pass those values from input carefully observe my syntax this is really 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 important first things i will remove everything that is what i do in real time projects also remove everything how many how many columns are there one two three you should definitely pass three values here because you are passing three here okay next step what i do please follow the same step that is the syntax if you want to pa pass the value colon copy this name give as you can pass any name okay you can pass fr from here you can pass any name like one also but always best practice custom name cust name okay so colon followed by name okay then copy the same name here colon and you have to pass whatever name you want you and pass it okay this is the syntax okay colon cust name here what if you are passing like xxx you can still pass values like here give any name here xxx but please make sure that you are giving that reference name here xxx that means you are telling that input parameters whatever values you are starting with colon xxx xxx that value should be passed over here that is the importance but best practice should always be like this so that you won't get confused okay that is my first value next second is account number here put a comma again colon no spaces direct accn again comma colon okay one two three four five whatever it is comma enter i already have sravan with an account name sravan i will say apex click on it enter now another one is password okay password and don't give any space here you should directly paste password paste password so here 
password colon again you can give random password here comma uh, there is one more field which is missing here that is balance so you should have balance as well so go here put balance here and please make sure that whatever column names are here should match with this one the balance here okay or else it will fail so let me put balance copy this balance and again comma colon no spaces paste here and here also balance you can give balance as this is decimal 123.56 i will write okay so this is the syntax all right okay you are passing all the values from here to here right now i am hard coding the values but i will show you in the next example how to pass values and how to use data view for this okay for now i'll show you here put a transform message okay see what is the output for i told you right whenever you are connecting to external system you have to know what is the type of request that you are getting what is the type of response you are getting that's why i keep transfer message which was because i will know what kind of response that database is giving okay let me run the request again let's see if the first value is getting inserted like if i'm able to insert successfully then we can start dynamically evaluating our this thing my application is getting deployed guys if you do practice it is very easy and it will be more fun right you feel like you know hey i'm trying to insert data into database using my application okay so and i am using my local database so it works only on my local if you try to deploy this application into cloud up it will not work you have to choose a database where you have it available in the cloud okay let's wait for it to get deployed sometimes it takes more than one minute I see it is deployed successfully so if I go here my postman here I am using database insert right send the request okay my request is here now you can see let's see what is the output of insert statement unless and until we have error it is saying like you have a syntax error you have a syntax error check the manual correspondence blah 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 for the right syntax to use it here okay line number one so let's see what's the mistake that we are doing so what i will do is i will try to remove the single quotes here okay even this double quotes I single quotes I can remove see this kind of errors will come only when you are instead of doing everything at one go we can go step by step first step is we have tested connection in that way so remove all the spaces that we have so account password balance everything and hopefully i am using the inset query okay let me save this and redeploy get it redeployed let me go to console when i save it automatically it will redeploy because i have chosen this project build automatically so it will run it so here you got like it's saying like you have an error in your SQL syntax means your syntax is wrong that's why like we need to copy paste and see if anything is missing or not okay let's try it out one more time here you can see it is still progressing okay or what you can do is you can stop your application and right click and redeploy again if it is not working
it will take a bit of time because we have multiple components like validator component and all right so it will take as many connectors as you have in your application that will take time to load uh, the dependencies and all to build the project so don't worry about it Build a success after building it will deploy. So this build will create a jar, a jar file where we use it for deployments. I think I have shown you in the development of first a part development phase first part. Now it is deploying. Alright, my application is deployed successfully here. So let's go back and see if this works. Fingers crossed. Yep, it is working. So those spaces and single quotes are not required anymore. But can you see some the output of you know, the insert statement is something like this. Okay, the F it, sh it will show the affected rows. One row is affected and resume it it says like affected rows is one now if you go to your database and run this you should see apex servers can you see here apex blah 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 and if you run it again okay still again affected rows is one this time again now two rows were added with two different custom IDs, but the values are same because I am hard coding the values in my insert statement. Now all that I need to do is I need to change only in the input parameter assigned values. Here I am here you can see let me double click and make it bigger. Okay. What I can do is here instead of hard coding the values let me pass them through input so that I will map accordingly. Okay. JSON. Here what I will do instead of cust name, see how can a user know what is cust name? Cust name means it doesn't make sense for him. Okay. Username. I will use username. Okay. This time I will give mule soft. Next. So here you should write payload dot whatever input you are passing. Payload dot username. You are assigning those values here. Okay. Next ACC number. ACC number again put a valid name for input you know people who are requesting the consumers right so account number so it is like you say like account number I will give it properly one two three four five six seven and put this account number here like instead of using hard coding values you can say payload dot account number because this is an object pay this whole thing is a payload and payload dot account number will give this one two three four five six seven value likewise password you can give password normally like password okay like you can pass five six seven eight comma enter password I can use like payload dot password directly so payload dot password and then balance instead of balance I can write like amount because amount that you wanted to insert so 145 whatever it is so here I will write payload dot in this way I can dynamically change the values and and insert the data all right so we are all good save it while this is getting deployed I wanted to reiterate about the syntax that is really really important for interview perspectives or certification point of view so here 
colon is very important colon followed by any name that you give it here the same name should be matching here okay if you give any wrong name here instead of cust name you give some account name or something like that it will pass as null value there is no value that will be passed so this is the syntax and input parameters it's like though it is showing like in in examination point of view if you uncheck fx it will be like hash and square brackets inside that you will fall, have this like for example if i uncheck this one it should be something like this one okay this is the actual syntax okay hash and this one and if you click on fx this is fine okay please make sure about that so let me see if this application is started oops my system is a bit slow today so apologies for that okay let's see if our application yes it is successfully de deployed but let me put this here yes it is started now see the difference okay send it resume it i got one affected rows here if you run here you can see mulesoft in my workbench correct i will expand this as well mulesoft right likewise now let me remove the breakpoint here so that I don't have to debug every time. Here also select statement I will remove. Okay. Like now you can add as many rows as you want. So here now I will change like text zone. I can pass the same values. I, one affected row is there. Automatically my database will be updated with these values. And if you want, if you don't want to see any database, I will just close, you know. If you don't want to see the database, we can always use make use of our database select endpoint, which will give none all the rows every time. Can you see here? You are getting the information in the JSON format. So guys, this is how you can connect to database. That is all about database connector that I wanted to show you. It's very interesting. Please try to install your database and try to do hands on on it. All right so we have done hands hands on and next thing i wanted to show in our coming sessions we'll be starting the integration with salesforce that is all with like mules for salesforce developers and this is not only for the salesforce developers but this is for everyone so before that i want you guys to set up salesforce account all that you need to do is go to developer.salesforce.com so what i want you to do is go to your database account like go to your developers.salesforce.com okay i have already logged in because i have my credentials but if you don't have an account okay so please try to log into developer portal okay i have login credentials already and select the product salesforce and you can create your own login if you don't have an account here it is saying like this but if you are new to salesforce click on trailblazer trailblazer account okay try to log in uh, if you don't have an account created already please try to log in one with one of these methods i have already logged in with my uh, uh, linkedin account so once you create your account with this what you can do is then you can go ahead and uh, click on products salesforce that will take you to login.salesforce account okay if you don't have login.salesforce account and you can click on login with this and like click try for free okay click on try for free and enter all your details and start my free trial you will get a 30 days free trial and then you will get a username to your username assigned to your account okay i have my username already created so you can just log in okay yes then you will be routed to this salesforce account all right so you can go in, go to the advanced setup this is how something it looks like this is salesforce developer account where we will start our integration with salesforce so please try to create a salesforce account it is very easy if you have if you have already one save your username and password somewhere so that we can use it in our next sessions okay so that's all for today's session so please 
do this hands on so we have discussed about validation component database connector and we have seen how to create an account in salesforce and please do follow us on salesforce apex hours and also my mules of tech zone channel and if you have any questions feel free to comment on the youtube video hope to see you in the next session thank you